I've been informed by our camp director that we need more exercise on account that this is an Olympic theme. So, everyone wearing red shirt, stand up, okay? So if you're not, sit down. Okay, but if you're wearing red, stand up. Okay, now you can sit back down. Now, if you're wearing white socks, stand up. Okay, sit back down. If you have blue eyes, stand up. Okay, sit back down. If you have black hair, stand up. Okay, sit back down. If you're wearing blue pants, stand up. All right, now sit back down. If you're not wearing socks, stand up. All right, now sit back down. If you have brown eyes, stand up. Okay, sit back down. If you have blonde hair, stand up. Okay, now sit back down. Wow, that was a lot of standing and sitting. You know, each thing I named, like what you were wearing, your hair color or the color of your eyes, these were all things that I could see. But there are a lot of things about you that I cannot see. However, when Jesus, the Son of God, looks at you, he not only sees how you look on the outside, he also sees inside your mind. He knows what you're thinking. He sees inside your heart. He knows what you love. He sees your past. He knows everything that has happened to you. And he sees your future. He knows what he wants you to become. And even if you don't think you're very important, Jesus does. Wow, think about that. Jesus sees the best in you. He knows you have awesome potential. And Jesus makes this promise. Nothing can ever separate us from his love. When Jesus chose 12 people to become his disciples, he did not judge them on their looks or their occupations. Instead, he looked inside their hearts and saw what they could become if they would follow him. Four of the disciples Jesus chose, James, John, Andrew, and Simon, were ordinary fishermen. But Jesus wanted to make them fishers of men. Simon and the other disciples had been traveling and working with Jesus for two years, helping him tell the good news. They had seen Jesus heal the sick, change people who were bad into people who were good, and perform many other miracles. One day, Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Simon answered, You are the Son of the living God. Jesus was very pleased with Simon's answer because he knew Simon really believed in him. Other people may have just seen Simon as a plain old fisherman, but Jesus saw him as a leader. Simon knew who Jesus was. He loved Jesus and he wanted to obey Jesus with all his heart. So Jesus did an amazing thing. He changed Simon's name. He said, now I say to you that you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. The name Peter means rock. Jesus gave Simon this name because he knew Simon was becoming a strong leader. Until this time, perhaps people didn't see Simon as a strong leader. Maybe they saw him more like a marshmallow. Can someone toss me a marshmallow? Oh, thanks. Like this, you know, kind of soft and doesn't, you know, he's not much of a leader, but Jesus saw the best in Simon. He said, Peter, you are like a rock. Can someone toss me a, oh, never mind. So what's the key? Have you ever heard the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover? What that means is, the way something looks on the outside may not necessarily be what it's really like on the inside. Jesus looks at the inside, and he knows our hearts and minds, and he sees what we can truly become. The key to this story is the closer we get to Jesus by reading the Bible and learning who Jesus is, the more we can put our trust and faith in him. And the more we put our trust and faith in him, the more our hearts are changed. And the more our hearts are changed, the more we become the people that God intended. And that's the key. So what's that to me? We see in this story that Simon's name was changed to Peter, meaning rock, because Jesus was saying, you will stand firm in your faith and be a leader for me. And did you know that when we put our faith in Jesus, we get a new name? No longer are we orphans in a lost world. We now belong to God's family, and we are given the greatest name of all, child of God. So, how should I be? 
I need to realize that becoming the person God wants me to be isn't going to happen overnight. The disciples were with Jesus for three years. And sometimes they did things and said things that showed they didn't really get it. But eventually most of them became incredible leaders for God. Like the disciples, I need to follow Jesus, read the Bible, pray, and ask for help from people I trust who know Jesus. This way I know I will be growing into the person Jesus wants me to be. And that's how I should be. It's time again for Practice Point. Jesus is the light. And when you follow Jesus, you are following the light. And when you become a light for others, think of it as you're like a shining star. You know, like a shining star. It doesn't matter who you are. You're, you're shining bright to see what you could truly be. You're a shining star. No matter who you are, shining bright to see what you could truly be. You're a shining star. No matter who you are, shining bright to see, oh yeah, what you could truly be. One more time. You're a shining star. No matter who you are, shining bright to see what you could truly be. Shining star for you to see what your life can truly be. Shining star for you to see what your life can truly be. Shining star for you to see what your life can truly be. Okay, that was fun. Nothing like a little earth, wind, and fire to get the blood going. Hey, tomorrow, again, we'll be looking at Peter and the other disciples. This time, they are in a boat during a storm and without Jesus. And they are scared. Then Jesus shows up, but he's not in a boat. <laughs> How is that possible? Stay tuned. We'll find out tomorrow. But for now, it's time once again for this week's Memory Verse. All right, kids, stand up. It's time for this week's memory verse, and it's out of Romans 8, 38a, and it goes like this. For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate me from his love. Romans 8, 38a, let's do it again. For I am convinced that nothing can ever Separate me from his love. Romans 838a. Yeah.